Greetings and salutations. Buenvenu. Bueno. Mushy mushy. All greetings to all genders, races, creeds, dominions, and religions. Welcome. Boss here. Uh, top of the morning to you again. Another AM recording. Glad to be here to do so. And uh, I uh, have been having some back and forth conversation, banter, and a little bit of learning, as a matter of fact. You know, always good to be able to be open minded enough to learn something. You know, don't be so fast that you open mouth and close your ears. When you open your mouth and close your ears, you almost give no doubt that there's a level of ignorance that you're okay with. <laughs> you know? So, I know a lot of times, or at least sometimes, if I see something and I think it would generate dialogue, you know, I may or may not divulge in finding out all the ins and outs about it until after I posted it. You know, it's posted, then we'll talk about it. But by the end, or by the time anybody has made mention as far as, you know, talking with me about it, okay, I've already done a little more research. I've already got some more information about it. It's not just a topic I see. It's now a subject that I've uh, invested time into. You dig? So, um, the Laura McLaughlin situation... I, I, I find that intriguing, but I always did find it intriguing because I couldn't understand at first what it was that she could be charged with. You know? and At least not the way that I understood the charges. Uh, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. But when it broke down, it was more like she just slid some money across. And I'm, come on now, depending on how much you understand and what you know. Your level of ignorance is only really judged by where you are and what you know and how much you've chosen to know. She slid a package across the desk <laughs> with the admissions people was just like, here you go. I'm Laura McLaughlin. All right. Now, that answered the questions and that checked some boxes that needed to be checked for her children that were going to be students at UCLA. You know, if... She, they, they must have needed to have some type of sports interest. So basically, she just paid to give them one. They'll be in rowing. How about rowing? Rowing? Are they really going to have to do it? No. Well, then rowing it is. Rowing it is. <laughs> now, come on. Come on, people. You can find the humor in it, or you can just think that the system is designed to just do certain things to certain people. Now... If you still, if you're on your racism kick, you're gonna say white against black. She is a white woman. You've seen plenty of black people get railroaded in court. So you just gonna instantly say that? Maybe, maybe you are, or maybe, maybe something a little more practical. Like uh, that's what rich people get away with. Rich people do that all the time. In one in one way or another, rich people always throw money at a problem and just expect it to go away. Okay, I see your point on that too. You know what I'm saying? I'm not rich. I'm not rich. I don't know if I would pay to have my son or daughter if they're not intellectually qualified. I don't know why I would waste the money putting them in a situation that I'd have to keep throwing money just to keep their ass passing. If you didn't qualify intellectually to be in that school, shit, I'm going to have to pay money every nine weeks. Every semester, I got to send a little package. It's like a payment by the mob. You know, like, hey, my son ain't going to be in class. Mark his ass there. Mark him there. You know, it, it must be quite expensive to do that when the child doesn't have any uh, capabilities of doing what you're paying to show that they do or can do, you know. But I'm not so closed-minded to where I would ever lash out to where I said something about the churn because the churn could have had some nepotism about themselves and be like, Mom, don't do it. You don't have to do that. And she's just like, shut up, I'm Lori McLaughlin. I can't have y'all walk around here not knowing how to row and ski and skydive. And I'm going to pay this school to say that you do row and ski and skydive. And it'll make you look more well-rounded. Mom don't. I am. Mom don't. I am. There you go. You know? 
That's nepotism, where you want to be regarded and recognized by your own talents and your own capabilities. You don't want nobody to go go to bat for you to where it's false. And fraud is what they basically got charged for in the end. You know? So, um, and you know what? Sometimes I use movies as reference. Y'all know I do that. So, can I tell you a story? Real quick. Listen up. You remember uh, Coming to America? Of course you know Coming to America. If you don't, who don't? Who? Okay, maybe you don't. I'm, I'm defriending you at, right after I explain. Coming to America was a movie based on royalty. James Earl Jones was the king. He was King Joffrey Jaffer. He was the ruler of Zamunda. His son, played by Eddie Murphy, was king, uh, Prince Akeem. Prince Akeem, when this movie started, was uh, Prince Akeem's 21st birthday. And he... On his 21st birthday, he was going to be uh, married. They had one of them set up weddings. He was going to have a pick a wife, blah, 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 blah. So, but Prince Akeem had that nepotism, or he had some sense of nepotism. He wanted the, his integrity would not let him just be given a wife, like everything else had been given to him. And that's what we're talking about. The type of people that don't end up being good or decent people because you throw money at everything that could be an obstacle or could help them grow up or could make them have to do, deal with some adversity. Sometimes that builds character. And for whatever reason, he felt like everything given to him up to this point, this is where it should stop. Okay? So let me fast forward. Like I said, when the movie came on, it was always his 21st birthday. He done woke up. He do his teeth like this. And somebody come out and brush the teeth for him. He wake up and somebody brushes his hair. Uh, he don't wash his own balls and uh, cock set. No, somebody comes in and washes his balls and cock set. These people do everything for him. And at the point of his 21st birthday, he felt like he should say something to his parents. So why they sitting there having dinner at this long, breakfast, I'm sorry, at this long 18 foot freaking breakfast table, they have to talk by walkie talkie. He's so far from them, they so far from him. They're detached. They don't see something's wrong with him. Or they would have been picked up on the fact that this privileged life gave him no independence. He's dependent on everybody to do everything for him. Okay? So they want to talk to him and he tells them. And he says, Father, I am a man who has never tied his own shoes. He said, wrong. You're a prince who's never tied his own shoes. I tied my own shoes once. It's a very overrated experience. But what he realized, his son was telling him that he felt the need to have his own independence. People with money sometimes take the child's in, de, independence away by making them dependent on them to come to bat for them every time they need something. And you realize those people grow up to be people that don't pick up after themselves, don't clean up after themselves. Uh, they may have designer clothes on, but them shits don't match. Shirt be inside out with a sweater vest on. It's like, what the hell is wrong with this dude? His mama and daddy did everything for him. And then when they died and the money washed up, here's this kid that can't make an egg sandwich. Can't boil hot dog, fry water and burn it. This that's that's who they become. Cause you take away anything that would have made them learn how life goes. You just show them what money buys. So no, I would never come after the children or badmouth the children or disrespect the children because they didn't necessarily take uh take it upon themselves to say, Mama, Daddy, pay for me my way through every and anything, give me a notable college on my resume, and then I should be all right. We don't know if they did that or not. That's why I blame Lori. I blame Lori. I do. I blame Aunt Becky. Aunt Becky, I hope John Stamos gave you some rough anal. I wish she hadn't have done that. Because I loved... I Just like everybody else, I grew up on Full House. I did. Not Fuller House. Not the rest of that stuff. And she's notable. She earned it. Apparently, she went through the ranks and did everything that her kids probably could have done. But now they're tarnished. The little girl lost a little beauty makeup deal. Lori done lost money. I mean, come on. So come on. And it don't help the fact that she's getting this baby cake with icing on the top sentence for two months. Hey, dude, that just don't make it no worse. It's just like, yeah, it's all privilege. It's all greed. It's all corruption. They're making a movie about it. And the lady who's playing Lori McLaughlin in the story is just like, She's disgusted at even making them. She's going to take the role, but she's disgusted at even she had to play this role. Like, this is the rich and the privileged and the narcissistic and corrupt people taking advantage of what should be 
straight rules, unbiased all across the board. That's my take on it. What's yours?